On the menu today, Julia Child's tuna recipe. Not this. Welcome back to Jamie and Julia. Oh! <laughs> Bon appétit. So here we are in the kitchen with my book, Mastering the Art of French Cooking from JC. It's the first one. And yeah, I'm gonna go with this tuna recipe today. It's tong a la Provencale. Tomato, wine, herbs, and garlic are a good contrast to tuna, and this dish can be served either hot or cold. Boiled potatoes, green beans are a recommendation to go along with it, and we're gonna do that as well. As often as I eat tuna, which is all the time, I've never actually cooked it. I'm always eating it out of these things right here. Here's the dilio though. I've been hesitant to follow along to this recipe for the longest time. It just seems like it's like, I don't know, it's probably a sign of the times here with this cookbook, but I think the recipe has this tuna kind of getting overcooked a bit. I don't know. It just seems like she's going all in with it. So I got a solution to that. I'm gonna try to figure that out along the way. But for now, let's just get the fish and get going. The tuna, the loin of one, part of it, and it is fragile. It was like this, and then it's kind of come undone right here, which is fine because I have to cut it up into steaks anyway, so done, job's done. So the thickest part of the steak is coming in around two inches, and the thinnest part is around just under an inch and a half. Julia is recommending three quarters of an inch for her steaks but I'm not gonna go mess around with what I have in front of me. Uh, like I said, it's too damn fragile and... Oh my God. Oh. So in a baking dish, I'm gonna add in around a tablespoon of lemon juice, half a teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of EVOO, olive oil, extra virgin style, half of one eighth teaspoon of pepper, just a hoot. Let's beat that together and then in goes the tuna. Get them covered up in this marinade. Cover that up with wax paper. I gotta let this marinate for one to two hours in the fridge. I'm gonna be turning and basting them throughout that time too. Just doing your due diligence to making sure that they are properly marinated. I was wearing a different apron at the beginning of this video, wasn't I? I switched it. I'll switch it back. Yellow onion, mince it up. Three pounds of tomatoes added to boiling water for 10 seconds. Ooh. Remove them. Cut the stem out and they become easily peelable. Cut them horizontally, squeeze gently, remove any seeds and juice. I don't get worked up about this step. If there's seeds in my tomatoes, so be it. Roughly chopped tomato pulp. Couple seeds in there, not a big deal. So I would say it's around three hours later, this tuna is marinated. So the remaining marinade is gonna be too strong and fishy, so I don't need this. Pat the tuna dry. Would you please accompany me to the stovetop? Welcome. I'm gonna bring over my favorite dish here. Three to four tablespoons of olive oil. It has to be very hot and we're gonna saute the tuna rapidly, two minutes per side, till lightly browned. It's not lightly browned, come on, man. Didn't really get to what I was expecting, so let's do a minute and a half on the second side. Out it goes. In goes one cup of minced onion, sauteing these for five minutes until tender, but not brown. Three pounds of chopped tomatoes. Two cloves of garlic, mashed. Whoa, after some thought I decided three cloves of garlic mashed. I'm not driving. Half a teaspoon of oregano, quarter teaspoon of thyme, quarter teaspoon of salt, and a couple hoots of pepper. Actually, it's probably a quarter teaspoon worth. And these, my friends, are the flavors of Provence. The cover, cook it slow for five minutes. Tuna in the baking dish, snug as a bug in a rug. That expression left a lasting impression on me. The onion tomato mix over here. A little more salt. Uh, while you're at it, a little more Pepsi. It was missing that je ne sais quoi. Spread the tomato mixture over the fish. Because I'm sticking to the full recipe, of the sauce, 
but not the fish. You can't see the fish right now. It's underneath everything. That's cool. I like it. <laughs> it's cool, man. This is where my plan comes into play here. So one of those tuna steaks is gonna be using Julia's directions, exactly. The other one is gonna be uh, up to me. I would like mine to be medium rare, firstly, and I need to get it to a temperature of around 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Julia's, I have no idea what we're aiming for. We're just baking it for a long ass time. So I get the probe into the heart of the steak there. It's to a simmer on the stove. Okay, once that's to a simmer, baking this for an initial 15 minutes first. I've been set to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Guess we're gonna see what happens. Jamie versus Julia. Little baby potatoes, aw. And I promise sides, I'm gonna deliver. Green beans over here. Okay, so things have to happen. Ah, <laughs> me! My fish is up to 127F, which I think is the right temperature to take this sucker out. Why? Why would you do something like that? My tuna steak comes out. So with a pinot here, one cup of white wine, I'm gonna pour that in my baking dish. So believe it or not, I gotta bake this for another 30 minutes. And once the sauce and the fish, the fish starts simmering, that's what it says. Once the fish starts simmering, I turn the oven down to 325. So I gotta trust Julia with this baking time, but I don't know. Tent it, tent it. Potatoes into this boiling water. Green beans into this one. We're blanching the beans first. Potatoes, we're just gonna boil. We have a sip of wine, clean up the kitchen. Let's have a good time. We're cooking after all, right? It's supposed to be fun. I gotta get my blanched beans into my hot skillet. Turn the heat up, evaporate the moisture. Salt, pepper, little butter, couple hoots of lemon juice, and a little chopped parsley. 30 minutes later. Hello. There it is. <laughs> okay. Where's Charlie? Scrape off the sauce. Tin foil back on top of these. So we're boiling this down until it reduces to two cups worth. After it's reduced, two tablespoons of tomato paste. Get off, please. So next up is completely optional. She says it's a tablespoon of meat glaze. And then she has a recipe in her cookbook on how to make it, but you have to go through a whole rigmarole. Uh, I have some veal demi-glace, you know, just on hand, you know, as one does. And I figure why not add a tablespoon of this, which I think is exactly what she's referring to, or pretty similar. And that shall add a depth of flavor. Turn the heat down, simmer for a moment. All right, so in uh, some random thing that was right beside me, I'm gonna pour in a tablespoon of flour and a tablespoon of softened butter. Let's add in our flour butter paste to salt and Pepsi's one last time. Let's get this to a simmer. Which tuna should be served on the main plate? Which one should be served on the secondary plate? Unfortunately for Julia, I'm going with mine on the main. Whew. Her tuna, boiled, buttered, and parsleyed potatoes. Green beans. Julia says, last but not least, add some chopped parsley to the sauce. Here we go. This one's feeling kind of lonely, so also on that. I don't think there's anything left to do. Let's eat. Order up. Almost lost the camera there, but I didn't, so let's eat. That's not as, uh, as photogenic as I thought it would be. All right, I was expecting pink. That is not pink. All right, here's Julia's. See what it's all about. <laughs> Julia. The great tuna experiment of the day is now over. The results are in how I cook the tuna versus following along to Julia's recipe. Mine wins. It's a landslide. I was aiming for like the pink on the inside. I didn't get there, you know, disappointed, but 
after eating it, I didn't get too hung up on it. It was really nice, juicy and tender, had the tuna taste to it. Sweetness and the tanginess of that sauce really just added a little bit of a... That all being said, we should probably talk about this. As I suspected, it is way overcooked. It's just really dry and flaky, and each time I take a bite, I really just need a sip of something. Borderline hockey puck territory. Uh, it tastes like canned tuna. It's even got the texture of canned tuna. You know, people are gonna tell me, well, ovens are different nowadays, right? They're far more advanced and they're able to insulate the heat better than older ovens, which would explain why she would be cooking that for so much longer. Also, the cooking times for fish has obviously changed throughout the years too, so keeping that all in mind. Still overcooked. I'm just happy I made the other one to really enjoy it. So I get the gist of it, Julia. I just think it was just tad over. And by a tad, I mean like, whoosh. all right, that's it. That's all. This was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Au revoir. <laughs>